Run on Less is an industry event organized by the North American Council on Freight Efficiency. This is my second video covering this event. In the first video, I covered windrows, which was the only alternative fueled tractor to run the long haul over the road routes, making it the electric king of the road. Yeah, you heard me right. Windrose, operated by Joyride Logistics, has been running thousands of miles on the highway from their base in Phoenix to Texas and California. And in this video, I'm going to compare data from it and the Tesla Semi. The Windrose is equipped with CCS connectors, although the industry standard MCS connector is an option. That CCS connector is available at Electrify America stations and elsewhere. And that's what they do. I know it's kind of weird, but it kind of works. And why isn't Tesla running those long routes? The answer is they don't have the charging infrastructure. Not yet. Tesla currently uses megawatt charging connector that is different than the industry standard MCS, although they've laid hints that they're going to change that. And more importantly, they do not have the NAX connector so that the Tesla supercharger network is useless to them. Tesla has announced plans to build out a network of megawatt chargers for the Tesla Semi. Dan Priestley gave an update at ACT Expo saying there are 46 charging sites identified and plans underway to have them operating by early 2027, so I would expect some to pop up next year. Plans are moving ahead at Gigafactory Nevada with production ramp up next year in 2026 to a production capacity of 50,000 semis a year. But that's next year, right here, right now. The Tesla Semi on the road works great so long as they do not have to charge out in the wild. They need charging infrastructure at a location near their depot where they can return to each night, limiting them to regional or local runs for now. Saya Semi number two runs regional routes, not crossing state lines, rather they do long day trips from Stockton to Bakersfield, California, and back in the same day, over 400 miles, flexing the truck's 500-mile capability. In the profile video for Saya, they did not specify where they are charging, so I did my creepy truck tracking thing again, and it looks like they're charging somewhere on the west side of Manteca, California. Uh, but then I realized... Eureka, they're actually charging in neighboring Lathrop, California, home to Tesla's megawatt plant. And sure enough, at that facility behind a fence, there are mega chargers for the Tesla Semi. Saya has reached an agreement with Tesla to stop by and charge there as needed, then make the 12-mile drive back to their depot center in Stockton. I said it in the first video, so I'll say it again here. These figures are not precise. In particular, Tesla is very secretive and does not disclose how big their battery pack is. Most estimates put it at about 900 kilowatt hours, so that's what I'll use. On occasion, when it charged from about 10 to 40%, it averaged over 800 kilowatts. That's better than the 750 kilowatt advertised rating for the mega charger. So. Maybe, just maybe the battery is a little smaller than 900 kilowatt hours, or it just can charge better than advertised. We don't know. For the Tesla Semi, the longest distance between charging stops was 466 miles that I observed, and that took the battery state of charge down to under 10%, and that's pretty good given its 500 mile stated range. The wind rows I observed going up to 385 miles taking the battery down to 16.8% state of charge. And given that it relies on public charging, that's about as far as they were willing to push it. And given its 420 mile claimed range, that's pretty good. As for efficiency, Tesla advertises less than two kilowatt hours per mile. One of their operators, Pepsi, said they see numbers around 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile. Tesla being that sneaky devil, did not allow run on less to report detailed telemetry data on efficiency or on elevation changes. On the long continuous runs between Stockton and Bakersfield, Tesla achieved, by my estimation, an efficiency between 1.7 and 1.8 kilowatt hours per mile, which is great. Winrose in my previous video was running all over the Southwest with a wider range of efficiencies based on the terrain of where they're running. 
But lo and behold, since then, they started running that same route between Stockton and Bakersfield on Interstate 5. It's like they're trying to pick a fight with Tesla. The official efficiency reported by the system was 1.66 kilowatt hours per mile running on the same highway as Tesla. Uh-oh. But before we jump to conclusions, it was a jump to conclusions, Matt. We still don't know exactly the loads Tesla and Windrose were hauling at those times, and the calculations for Tesla need to assume a usable battery capacity because, you know, they won't tell us that either. But overall, both trucks deliver impressive efficiency numbers on the same stretch of highway in California. Simply put, when it comes to the observed data, the Tesla Semi is as good as advertised for charging and efficiency and likely even better. Both of these trucks are showing that they are ready to run hundreds of miles between charges, but they are limited right now by the availability of EV charging infrastructure that can accommodate large tractors with a large battery, plus a trailer in tow. Tesla and companies like Greenlane and others are starting that build out along popular routes on the West Coast. In my next video, we'll look at electric tractors running local routes, moving trailers multiple times a day, another Tesla plus a Volvo VNR electric and a Freightliner e-Cascader are all running. So hit that like and subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on that comparison. In the meantime, keep on trucking.